This is our CEE 420 term project. Our team is Turner Hochteich. And members involved were Dylan Antilla, Eric Sager, John Hines, Luke Hahn, Joe Schimpf, Chris Rue, Patrick Russell, Jack Hayes, and Vishal Shah. The project in question is the MCORT project. The crew that was the subject of this analysis is comprised of eight members, a mixing truck, and various screening tools. Through analysis of the existing operation, three proposals were formulated to identify productivity improvements in the operation. The first proposal maintains the original time frame and decreases the crew by two, two laborers. This decreases the overall idle time of the crew. The second proposal has the lowest total cost at the sacrifice of productivity as it eliminates two laborers and a screener. The third proposal increases the crew size and productivity while sacrificing the total costs. The project in question was designated as Project 1 of the much larger five-phase MCOR improvement project. This project was funded through the Champaign-Urbana Mass Transit District, the municipalities of Champaign and Urbana, and the University of Illinois. The overall objective of this particular portion of the project was to help accommodate the large number, number of pedestrian and bicycle traffic near Loomis Laboratory. The observed operation was the concrete pour for the gutter and curb of the northeast corner of Green Street and Goodwin Avenue. For this study, the cycle time was calculated only for the concrete pour itself. The construction of the formwork was completed prior to the start of the observation period. The construction methods were as follows. A shoot operator simultaneously directed the driver of the mixing truck using hand signals and verbal cues while also controlling the flow of liquid concrete to the form rig for, of the curb. As the concrete was poured, three screeders and two laborers formed the concrete into the required shape of the 12-inch gutter, gutter and the 6-inch curb, which is shown in this diagram. An additional employee also collected samples for compressive tests. So our site is located on Green and Goodwin, which is right in front of the Loomis Laboratory, and the day of our observation was April 5th, 2018. So the site remained dry during the observation of the following days and the site is relatively small and the main challenge of the site was the movement of the vehicles. But the company solved this problem by dividing the construction into two phases, the eastbound and the westbound. So now that the eastbound construction is complete, they opened up the eastbound so that the construction vehicles can exit and enter out of the construction site and now they're currently working on the westbound site of the structure. Majority of the curb, gutter, and sidewalk has been removed in preparation for the new concrete to be poured into. And the fence has been erected from Goodwin to, Ab to Lincoln Avenue to protect civilians from injuries and also to protect the site conditions. Detailed observations were carried out on site to analyze the relationships between activities and their sequencing. A video of the site was taken and then analyzed by the team. The team then broke the video down into cycles and then chose a single cycle to break down into activities, tracking each worker and equipment for the duration of the cycle and recording sequence. Uh, the crew balance chart is a graphical representation of the labor and equipment required for an activity. A crew balance chart involves recording the activity of each crew member and piece of equipment for the duration of one cycle, which was done by taking notes on the site video. Each worker and piece of equipment was then given a column and their activities were sequentially plotted against time. This visual organization of data helps identify inefficiencies within a complex process. Flow, di flow diagrams differ from crew balance charts in that they do not indicate duration, sequencing, or crew member requirements of an activity, but rather show the movement of people and materials for an activity through the use of a line sketch. This is done by drawing a map of the site labeling for spatial orientation then drawing lines between sections of the diagram and labeling them with their corresponding activity. Process charts are often included to explain the activities that are represented within the flow diagram, making up for the flow diagram's lack of sequencing information. The process chart itself include, lists operations, transports, inspections, delays, or storage items in a sequential order. The curb and gutter concrete floor was analyzed for its existing productivity by using a crew balance chart. The table shows one cycle of the concrete pouring which is defined by 16 linear feet of concrete curb and gutter poured and screeded into place. The amount was chosen because it was the approximate length poured during the time of the on-site observation. 
It is also assumed that the concrete truck has already arrived on site from Goodwin Avenue and has begun an initial pour. This table depicts the typical cycle of the existing crew. At the beginning of the cycle, the mixing truck operator is idle as the chute operator guides the concrete into the formwork. All the concrete scooters are working on the initial concrete pour while the laborers are placing the concrete into the curb and gutter shape. The third laborer is not shown in the on-site videos, but he was observed to place concrete into a cylinder to be tested by, by ERI and did not contribute to the rest of the operation. The concrete scooters continue to follow the laborers as they move forward with the chute operator for the rest of the cycle. The entire cycle took six minutes to, to achieve the observed 16 linear feet. From the on-site observation, the group determined three fixed values, the time to move the truck, guiding the concrete in the forms, and place the concrete in the cylinder. Moving the concrete mixing truck during the observation required a small amount of time, but for the purpose of analysis, a time of 30 seconds was to properly analyze the operation. Guiding the concrete into the forms was observed to be approximately 90 seconds. Placing the concrete into the test cylinder was observed to be approximately 60 seconds. The entire cycle took six minutes to achieve the observed 16 linear feet. From the on-site observation, the group determined three fixed values. The time to move the truck, guiding the concrete in the forms, and placing the concrete in the cylinder. Moving the concrete mixing truck during the observation required a small amount of time, but for the purpose of analysis, a time of 30 seconds was to properly analyze the operation. Guiding the concrete into forms was observed to be approximately 90 seconds. Placing the concrete into the test cylinder was also observed to be approximately 60 seconds. The total screening time observed across the three concrete screeders was 900 seconds, and the total time observed to place the concrete by the laborers was 480 seconds. Overall, the existing process had large amounts of idle time. In addition to laborer three, concrete screeder one and two both had significant idle times during the operation. The group decided that the idle time incurred by the mixing truck operator and chute operators were both fixed amounts that would stay constant. However, the current operation has significant idle time that can be optimized. The existing crew was calculated to have a productivity of 1.46 cubic yards per man hour with a unit cost of $47.46 per cubic yard. The first proposal for improving the current crew balance subtracts two laborers and decreases idle time among the remaining workers. This was primarily accomplished by giving the responsibility of filling the concrete cylinder at the beginning to the third concrete screener. This screener also helps the laborers place concrete toward the end of the cycle. These adjustments, in combination with eliminating idle time, meant that the smaller crew was able to complete the same cycle as the original in the same amount of time. The second proposal takes the basic frame of the original plan and redistributes the work among less laborers for a more cost-efficient approach. This proposal eliminates two laborers and a concrete screeder. The remaining laborer is now solely responsible for placing concrete and the second screeder now fills the cylinder at the beginning of the cycle. This resulted in longer total cycle time, but a very low total cost. The third proposal considers a scenario with two trucks and an additional two concrete scrapers. While this method does require more investment in the form of equipment and labor costs, it also doubles the output within each six minute cycle. Like the previous proposals, this plan assumes that concrete has already been poured prior to the cycle beginning. In the first two minutes, previously poured concrete is placed and screened, while new concrete is guided into the form ahead of the crew. It is also important to note that two cylinders are now filled for testing due to the addition of another concrete truck. The advantage of this strategy is that all screeders and laborers avoid any idle time, and the total output of the crew is increased by 100% while increasing the cost by only 60%. Because output was doubled, the total time allotted for each task also had to be doubled.
The table on the right shows a summary for the existing crew balance along with the three proposals broken down into unit cost and productivity. From this data comparison, it is seen that Proposal 3 has both the lowest use unit cost as well as the largest productivity. This combination makes Proposal 3 the most attractive option and the option that our company recommends implementing for the project. This option does require the addition of resources and capital, but given that this can be provided, it will prove to be a sound investment and especially ideal for tight schedules. To summarize, after strategizing and performing different methods of study, like making on-site observations, creating crew balance charts, flow diagrams, and process charts, we analyzed the existing operations and their problems. Based on the observations of the existing crew balance chart and the productivity analysis of each proposed improvement after evaluating their implementation costs, there were many ways in which this crew could boost their efficiency. For a simple fix in proposal one, the crew has the option of cutting two laborers from the process and spreading work to eliminate the idle time. This method definitely reduces the cost of the process while maintaining the same constant productivity. There is no downside to this option because the same amount of work is being accomplished in the same amount of time with lesser labor cost. Proposal 2 was created to explore the options of minimal cost. This crew balance eliminated two laborers on a concrete and a concrete screener. This resulted in the lowest total cost, but at the same time decreased the productivity significantly. Hence, this proposal should be considered only when the total cost of the project has critical budget constraints. Thus, in most cases, this proposal should be avoided if there's an option to achieve better productivity and lower unit cost. The final proposal examined a scenario if the total cost was not an issue and additional labor was available. By adding a second cement truck and two concrete screeders to the original plan, this process manages to produce twice the output in the same amount of time. This resulted in a high total cost of about $1,088 per hour, but produced the lowest unit cost and highest productivity of all the proposals. This process would be ideal for projects with stringent time constraints and a large capital investment. In conclusion, Proposal 3 successfully accomplishes the goal of optimizing the project time, cost, and resources while improving the construction productivity.